Hey guys, I'm back. What's going on? Hope you guys have been doing well. Welcome to Gamers with Gains. I'm going to be doing a couple videos today. First couple of batch of videos I've been doing in quite a while. Been doing some pretty, pretty big things, including stuff involving E3 2015. I just got back from my trip not too long ago. I'm kind of making this video about two, three days after I actually got back from my trip out in LA. Really, really fun uh, stuff that was going on. Actually, no, it's actually a little bit more than three days because right now it's Thursday today. So when I got back on Sunday, or no, on a Friday, so it's a little bit more, close to about a week or so. So, anyway, E3 2015, I'm going to get into that in just a bit, but basically I'm going to be doing a couple videos, kind of like jumpstart the momentum of the actual channel again. I'm going to be doing daily vlog videos here on the Gamers with Games channel, every single day about one vlog video, and then weekly going to be doing some other stuff, which I'll detail another time. But, let's talk about E3 2015. E3 2015 was a huge, huge deal huge huge year for me as well as a bunch of other people a lot of big stuff happened this was my second e3 actually attending it was pretty cool to be back in la again for quite you know after about a year or so because I, I normally don't travel out to la i usually now just go just because of e3 but la was cool a lot more friends and colleagues of mine both in and out of the game industry you know in the games media and such actually went this year really really cool uh, it was actually my friend HMK's first year at E3, so he was like all wide eye and stuff, and it was pretty exciting for him. So we got a chance to chill throughout the entirety of the week and actually go through all the different types of like you know halls, different appointments that we had, you know the press room and all the different stuff going on in LA at the time. So it was really fun to hang out with him and his girl. What is it? Which was really really cool. But uh, besides that, uh, let's go through kind of like some of the days and some of my thoughts on some of the events. That actually transpired at E3. This is kind of like my E3 post-mortem or post-E3 thoughts on everything that happened during my trip. Now, for me, my E3 didn't just last three days like what happened with everybody else. You know, when you guys watch it on television or you watch it on YouTube or Twitch or whatever streaming service have you. But I actually lasted out there in uh, L.A. I was out there for, in L.A. for about close to about a week from Sunday all the way to Thursday. Sunday being because of the Bethesda press conference and all the other events that were happening outside of E3. Specifically for me, the Nintendo World Championships. Now, the Nintendo World Championships were interesting. I actually went over there and met up with HMK and a couple other friends to actually see some of the stuff go down. We saw the finals. Super Mario Maker for N Nintendo Wii U, very, very hyped up audience for that actual game. Really cool to see some of the custom levels come to life from the different Nintendo designers and the game devs over there. They made these crazy awesome levels that happened some amazing stuff during the finals. And it was a really close battle. It was a really cool uh, experience, you know, a lot of people cheering and stuff. And then finally it was just capped off with Shigeru Miyamoto giving Nintendo's 3DS is signed by him to the winner and the runner-up. That I thought was a nice little sentiment. It was a nice little cool parting gift for the guys that actually competed. Very, very awesome experience seeing that. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. So that was really exciting and really fun to see like that. Now, the Bethesda conference, I didn't go to the Bethesda conference myself. I actually was it, heard about it from the different uh, was it, people that were there, as well as some of the members from the coalition team that actually went there. Now, in case you guys forgot, I freelance for the coalition. I'm a senior editor over there and I actually went to E3 with them. There was about six of us that went this year to cover the entirety of the event. So one of the guys went over there, actually saw all the games that they actually presented, the whole presentation. Said it was really cool. It was kind of like a classic 1950s uh, theater with like popcorn and everything. They served him popcorn, which I thought was funny. And he got these little bobble kind of like our little figurines for Fallout 4, Doom 4, and I believe also Elder Scrolls, if I'm not mistaken. But Pretty good stuff, pretty good announcements, exciting uh, games that were actually shown, Doom 4, Fallout 4, all those different types of games there. I don't believe they had any Elder Scrolls announcements. I think maybe they talked about the Elder Scrolls online briefly, but they didn't talk about Elder Scrolls 6 or anything like that. But you could check out the full presentation online that's been all over the place. Oh, Dishonored 2, that was the other one that they talked about, Dishonored 2. So, going into Monday for me in the trip. Normally Monday, if you're part of the games media, that's an important day for you because that's the day when if you're out in LA for E3, you get to go to every single one of the press conferences that are happening that day. Specifically for this year, it was Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, EA, and uh, yeah, that was about it. Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, and EA, which are just four press conferences that all throughout the entirety of that day, with Sony capping it off and Microsoft starting it off. Uh, so... 
Microsoft press conference. I got there almost a little bit late, so I didn't get any as good seats as I did last year, and I wasn't able to get as good pictures as I normally did last year, but I was still able to be kind of like in the top, top upper level seeing the presentation, which was good. Very big announcements, including the backwards compatibility and the presentation, the demo of the HoloLens uh, technology, the kind of like virtual reality stuff that they showed, which was very, very cool. It had a lot of people in the audience all tantalized and stuff, but uh, big news from there, obviously the the backwards compatibility for Xbox One for 360 games. Very, very big deal by the time they roll that out. I'm going to be pull, pulling out a couple 360 games that I have in storage here to actually kind of like put them on the hard drive of my uh, Xbox One. Uh, the Rare collection, the, the Rare replay collection, pretty cool, but I was expecting some more stuff, hopefully with some new announcements, including Battletoads. You know, Microsoft had been teasing that for so long. Everybody, including myself, was expecting a new Battletoads game announcement, but we didn't get that. I guess that was just part of the Rare replay collection, but who knows what next year or over the next year or so would actually bring about with Rare. Rare actually brought out a new IP, which is a pirate game. I forgot the name at the current moment, so I have to apologize. But it looked interesting, but this is a different type of Rare, as like different members of the media have said many times over since the presentation. I'm hoping that at least at some point over the next year or so, as we go into next year's E3, we'll be able to see gameplay of that, because we, we only just saw really a CG trailer, and I know it had that first-person perspective and everything like that, but I want to see a real gameplay trailer, or just a real gameplay demo of what that game actually is. So, moving on from there, they had Gears 4, they had the Gears of War Ultimates Collection, a lot of Gears love there. Uh, the Gears 4 demo with the gameplay was actually really, really cool. I'm really interested to see where this takes place, like, as far as, like, what's going on in the timeline and the events of the Gears universe. I was, I would have expected them, instead of moving forward in time, to actually go back again in time and actually explore what E-Day was. If you're a Gears fan, you've played Gears 1 through uh, 3 and Judgment, you know that E-Day is the day that the actual, uh, the Locusts, or, like, the pretty much the, the aliens and the enemies of the Gears universe kind of first appeared. And they never really explored that yet in any of the games. They've always talked about it and alluded to it. But, then again, I'm not really too much of a fan of prequels and stuff, and I love sequels and continuing on the story. This really piqued my interest with the kind of crazy design of some of the locusts and the monsters that they had in there. So, interested to see where Gears is going to go on the Xbox One. Uh, besides that, they had obviously also Tomb Raider, which was cool. And then they had a barrage of other announcements, which, again, you can check out their presentation online. There's videos all over the place. A lot of good stuff coming from Microsoft. Moving on for the rest of the day, I'm going to talk briefly about EA and Ubisoft, especially Ubisoft because I got a crazy story for you guys. So, EA. EA had some good love for Star Wars. They had Star Wars, uh, The Old Republic, a new expansion, which is a big, big deal for if you guys have been playing that game since. I know it's kind of dropped off at, you know, ever since its first launch and it hasn't really been getting a whole lot of support for a good long time, but it's nice to see a brand new story-based content or any sort of kind of like new interesting kind of like, you know, plot stuff be introduced back into the Old Republic. A lot of people were even saying that they were going to bring back Knights of the Old Republic, that Bioware RPG that was more kind of like, it was on the Xbox uh, original, the original Xbox, and it kind of had all the same type of like story kind of elements and choices stuff that Mass Effect originally had. And pretty much the Old Republic is kind of like an MMORPG version of that, but it didn't have too much of like the Bioware story-based decisions or outcomes or influences of what those games originally had. So they're kind of, I guess, trying to interject that into there. But I would have rather had Knights of the Old Republic. That's just me. But forgetting about that, let's talk about the real Star Wars stuff. Star Wars Battlefront, which also got some love on the E3 showroom floor around Sony's booth area, but they talked about it more at the EA press conference, which is very, very cool. I liked it. A lot of good stuff, Battle of Hoth scene, also the desert stuff, looks gorgeous. I, a lot of people that were actually playing the demo on the showroom floor, again, I saw this way before the showroom floor opened, but a lot of people were saying that the flying kind of sucked, but during the presentation it actually looked pretty awesome. I just haven't had gotten uh, hands on time with it. But it looks good, can't wait to play that game upon release. Uh, again, I'm a big Star Wars Battlefront fan, as sure as uh, most of you guys out there are. So. Moving on from there, they had a lot of sports stuff. Again, they had the stuff for FIFA with Pele. Pele is a big soccer legend if you're, if you're not really into football or quote-unquote soccer like that. But he was a big deal, and they kind of dragged him on a little bit with his interview. I thought it, it was one of those, it was one of the few moments during the EA press conference where everything came to a screeching halt. But it was nice to have him there. I wish that they were kind of a little bit more clear as far as if you were able to play with him in the game. That would have, I thought that would have probably been a little bit interesting. Moving on from there, though, they had a bunch of other sports-related stuff. They had some AHL. They had some uh, 
was it some of uh, Madden they had a little bit of some NBA stuff which a lot of that I really didn't care for and then they got into the mobile stuff which nobody really cared for I know they had a Minions mobile game and even kind of like a Hitman mobile game but everybody kind of tuned out at that point it was really funny and it's kind of true where a lot of the members of the press were kind of poking fun at the fact that as soon as the woman came on stage and she said, okay, let's talk about mobile, everybody just clearly just pulled out their phones and just completely ignored what she had to say. I was in the audience. I was there. I saw it. It was hilarious. So, I mean, I feel bad for her, but that, that's definitely not the way to go about your conference, EA. So, moving on to the craziness that was the Ubisoft press conference. Now, I say crazy in the worst way possible because I had probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had at an E3 before even though I've only really been to two of them that I've really experienced or even really heard of uh, from Ubisoft and I thought this was a damn shame because I go to I come out of the EA press conference and I get on the shuttles because we have these shuttles that take us around to LA to the, each of the different press conferences to go to Ubisoft I get there first before the rest of my team members do and I'm waiting online now I'm US media I have a little badge that says media on it I wish I could you know what I'll show you guys right here that I actually have my media badge, which is all jacked up right about now, okay, but my badge is a little bit jacked up because of it, like the wear and tear of it, but as you guys can see, it has a little thing that says media. Very hard to miss, very hard to kind of like, you know, overlook and such, and it has my name and everything, and it just says US Media. But I was waiting on the line because I didn't have an appointment to actually get into the Ubisoft press conferences. Usually, for the press conferences as media, you get these invites that allow you just to go straight inside. When you don't have that, you either can't go to the press conferences or you can wait on the line, the public line, for all the rest of the people that aren't U.S. media or foreign media to actually stay on there to see if you can get into the press conference. So I'm there early, waiting in line or whatnot, and one of the members of the Ubisoft team that's actually outside maintenancing and kind of like watching over everything comes over and tells me, hey, listen, there's another line over there for U.S. media. So I'm like, oh, okay. And he goes, yeah, even if you don't have an appointment over there, you go over there and wait on the line, you'll get in as media. I was like, okay, well, are you sure? Because I don't have an invite and I'm just waiting here online. I don't want to lose my spot online. Makes sense, right? So he goes, no, go ahead and go over there. To confirm this, and one of the things I was worried about, because again, I was really worried about losing my spot in line, I wait till a couple of my other team members come, and they're also media as well. They're part of the coalition team. They're like, yeah, there's a whole separate line over there for people that are media that don't have invites. I'm like, okay. So I walk over to the side where there's another door kind of like opposite. If you look at straight at the building, it's on the left side. I go over there, and then I look, and I don't see a line. So I go up to one of the Ubisoft representatives, and I tell him what the other rep had told me. And he goes, there is no media line. Uh, what are you talking about? This is only for people that have invites or not. And I go, well, one of your guys over there just pulled me aside and just told me, hey, listen, you know, this is what we're doing. This is the media line over on the opposite side, and you don't have to wait on here. And he goes, no, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And I go, well, then where's the rep that, that told me to? And apparently, I guess the rep had went inside during the course of all the craziness that was there because I wasn't the only one they told this to, apparently. There was a bunch of foreign media guys that were, I guess they were from Europe specifically. I don't know, remember which country. I do apologize. But they had also been told the same thing, and they were asking the same questions, like, okay, what the hell? So... There's about a big group of us, I have to say maybe about seven or eight of us, different people that are there saying all the same thing. And the Ubisoft reps just did not help us out whatsoever. We kept telling them, hey, listen, because we got pulled out of the line or whatnot and we were told this, can we get back into our spots in line? And they basically told us no, which myself and the rest of those guys there, especially the foreign media, I feel so bad for them, were super pissed off because they had just lost their spot after being told something. And then having the what is it having the possibility of not getting into the conference so everybody's in high emotion right now everybody's super upset there was one guy i don't know i really want to find out this guy's name because i would love to have a conversation with him about this where i kept telling him listen you know one of your reps did this to me i'm media i'm showing you my badge and this is what he told me so what what's up and then he got really rude because you know, I don't know whether he was upset with dealing with all the people that were there because everybody was telling him the same thing. But he got super, super rude and just stormed off away from me while I was still trying to talk to him like that. To even to the point where some of the other reps, and I guess they're, they're, they're volunteers or they're interns or whatnot, aside, even gave him a look like, the hell, there that was like super uncalled for. And then they even told me, listen, just get back into the line and then hopefully you can get back in because, you know, we're still letting people in there. We have plenty of space. 
So I was like, you know what? Okay, this is nonsense, and this is probably the worst experience I've had so far, but I'll do it, I'll get back in line. I had to go all the way to the back of the line, this long line that goes down towards the end of the street with all these people that aren't media, by the way, which is a whole nother convo for later, that are all media, that are, that are not all media there, and it's just like huge, huge line. It, it was snaking around the sidewalk. So I go over to the end, and after maybe about five, 10 minutes, that same guy that had just stormed off comes right back on and says to everybody, hey, listen, we don't have any more space right now. Nobody else is getting inside. To which everybody in that line was super pissed off, including the people that were before that got pulled out. So that was absolutely insane. Ubisoft completely messed that up. Granted, everybody there didn't have an invite and such, but unlike last year, which they had a better handling on everything, because last year was the same thing for me, and I was still able to get inside as media and such, and I feel like they were just, there was no need to be rude to not only me and uh, was it the rest of the actual people. That was just insane. I really don't understand how that could be done at an event like E3, and that's something that I hope I could open up a dialogue with, with Ubisoft at some point, because I feel that that was unnecessary. You know, not just for me and, and what was going on with me like that, but if I look at the, uh, the actual foreigners, the actual foreign press when they were actually over there. And on top of having to deal with customs and immigration, not immigration, I'm sorry, customs and all the other stuff that foreign media has to deal with, they have to deal with that type of stuff. And that's a shame because these are the people that want to actually be there. They could have done a little bit better or maybe even getting a better location, something bigger where more people could go into it. But... I digress. Let me know what you guys think in the actual comment section, and, I'll, and we'll actually get that combo going. See what the hell is going on with Ubisoft. To which, because of all that, I tuned out at everything that was going on with Ubisoft that day. I just did not care. I heard about it all later. I heard about Ghost Recon and all that other cool stuff, which sounds pretty cool, but that complete experience just ruined it for me for Ubisoft. So, I tuned out. But here's where things got incredibly awesome. I know I'm going kind of long with this vlog video, but a lot of cool stuff happened at E3, which I'm going to get to also. PlayStation, Sony. Sony knows how to do E3 right. Sony knows how to take care of their fans and everybody else and then some at E3. Every single time. This is the second E3 press conference that I've been to Sony. For, for them specifically, and I've had an amazing time. Just blew it out the water. Everything that happened that was bad for me at Ubisoft completely canceled out by Sony PlayStation. It was absolutely insane. So I decided, at first, before I even went over there, I'm outside, I met a couple extra people over there that had the same thing that happened to them. It was a guy, I believe, that worked over at Microsoft. I really apologize. I know I have his name uh, and some of the cards and stuff that I have. I think, I think it was De Devin or Devon. I really apologize messing up your name. But... Met up with him and his girl, we were talking for a bit, and then my friend Gio, HMK, yeah, I call him, H, I call him Gio, but he, he's real name, HMK. HMK comes out, you know, thinking that he was going to get into the Ubisoft press conference, and I told him, listen, pff, good luck with that, that ain't happening right now. And he was pissed off, too, because he was interested to see what was going on with uh, Ubisoft. So, uh, HMK and me and the other, and Devon and his girl all decide to go to Sony PlayStation early. So, we catch a ride over on the bus. We head over to the actual stadium section, or kind of like the, I guess the Space Center or something like that, it's called, for, uh, what is it, for LA, where you be, where uh, PlayStation was actually having their conference. And what they do is, in case you guys didn't know, for the media and the press and such, they're actually able to get in there. About an hour or two prior to the actual uh, event, it's really about an hour and a half, they actually open up this parking lot where you could go in, they feed you, and they give you all these drinks and stuff to kind of like settle you in after dealing with all that stuff at the convention or the other press conferences earlier in the day. They want you really nice and comfortable and chill. So they had all these food trucks and all these different types of like little bars. They're, they're little bars. They're not really like, you know, like super crazy bars that you find like, you know, in different buildings and stuff, but they do serve you alcoholic beverages and stuff. Really, really awesome. Got to meet up with a bunch of colleagues of mine, guys over at Gamer Tag Radio, guys over at Gamer Fin Nation, uh, Hip Hop Gamer, uh, again, me and my friend HMK, all these different guys. Really, really awesome. That I just got to just chill, eat some nice, I guess you could pretty much call it dinner because it was like later in the day. It wasn't really lunch. It was later in the day. So we had a nice dinner. We had some drinks. We chilled. We talked. And finally, it was time to go inside to what, what we, we didn't know at the time was going to be the beast conference of all of E3 the entire week. It was absolutely insane. So went there, went inside, sat down, got to hang out with all my friends and, G and HMK. Again, this was his first E3 press conference for Sony, so he didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. Little did we know, right? 
We got to hang out with the PlayStation MVP guys, my friend Ray over there who's a PlayStation MVP. Got to chat it up with him for a bit. Then the press conference starts and it happens, okay? That's the best way to, uh, really to describe it. It was just so much big, big announcements one after another. Granted, these were games that are not coming out this uh, year or within any sort of proximity of this year into next year, I think, really. I guess a couple of them were, but Last Guardian, uh, was it Final Fantasy VII Remake blew everybody's mind. Shenmue 3 Kickstarter for Shenmue 3. It's just absolutely, things were just blowing up all over the place. Horizon, another beautiful game, man. Uh, World of Final Fantasy, that actually appealed to me. Granted, I'm an FF fan. A lot of people were kind of turned off by it because of the chibi look and stuff. But I did some more reading into it, and it actually seems like something I'm really, really interested to, besides the aesthetic look of it. Uh, again, the closing off the conference with Uncharted 4, it was just boom, 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 boom. Every single announcement, you know, with the exception of maybe one or two during the Sony PlayStation conference, which is hard hitting. It just did not give you time to process the awesomeness that was happening there. I mean, for God's sakes, we're getting a Final Fantasy VII remake. I've said already for years, ever since that uh, Sony and uh, Square Enix at the PlayStation Expanse showed Final Fantasy VII PC port for PlayStation 4. I always thought that was uh, their statement is like, listen, we're not remaking this game. Little did I know now that we would actually be in a world where we're finally going to get a full-fledged Final Fantasy VII remake. That's insane. That was a complete mind-blowing experience. Uh, let alone opening up with The Last Guardian, which is another whole discussion for like two hours you could have in of itself. But all these games, all these announcements were absolutely insane. My friend HMK just clearly, he, he, he just, his mind was blown. He, he was good. He had a hell of a good E3. I will, I'm almost a little bit jealous because he had a really good first E3. I mean, mine was good, but it wasn't that good. So, but besides that, went through the rest of the day, hung out with everybody. Got to talk to all the different uh, coalition members about what had happened during the press conferences. So to kind of like keep things a little bit shorter, because again, this video is going a little bit long. The rest of the actual uh, E3 experience, the trip was awesome. I got to play a hell of a lot of games. I got to play Star Fox Zero, which was interesting. I wrote some previews for a lot of these games that I actually tried out up on thecoalition.com, which I'll link in the description box below so you guys can check it out. Because again, there was a lot of games that I saw. Uh, Star Fox Zero. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, Chibi Robo, which I think is going to be a hell of a good game on Nintendo 3DS. Uh, Disney Infinity 3.0, which again, another hell of a good game <clears throat> on PlayStation form. All kind of getting messed up from talking. Again, E3 will do that to you, even with the extra couple days break that I have. <laughs> but um, on top of that, uh, the Solus Project, the game on Xbox One that was announced. Uh, Street Fighter V I got to play, which I got to play with actual three characters. I played with Ryu, I played with Charlie, and I played with Bison, which was, again, just getting a feel for the game. I thought it was pretty good. I love the presentation of Street Fighter V. Uh, seeing Super Mario Maker in person and the demo kiosk that people were messing with. Seeing the whole Amiibo layout. For all the new and the kind of like, you know, the current Amiibo waves and such and the new ones coming. As well as all the new Amiibos for Chibi Robo, for Yoshi's Woolly World, for Super Mario Maker, which is the 8-bit Mario, which looks pretty damn big. It's like about that big, I want to say, give or take it about that wide. It's pretty, it's pretty meaty, a meaty Amiibo. The Skylanders stuff, the Skylanders that included Donkey Kong and Bowser. That was insane. Uh, what are the games that I played there? It was, it was absolutely nice. Drawn to Death. I played Drawn to Death over at the PlayStation section. Really, really cool game. Uh, the kind of demo that I actually played, the actual demo kiosk, kind of crashed on us. So they had to kind of like reboot the actual uh, dev kit PlayStation 4, which I thought was a little bit funny. But it was nice to see that there. Um, seeing Cuphead. Cuphead was another game that I thought was going to be really, really good. I can't wait to actually check out that game on Xbox One. Because I kept saying to myself, it looks good, it plays good, it's amazing. I would love for this same aesthetic and the same style to be applied to like Disney Interactive to make like a Mickey Mouse game in the 1940s with that same style or 1950s. Or a Donald Duck game. Where's my Donald Duck game? Come on, Disney. Let's, let's get with the program here. So oh, I love the games that I saw there. Besides that, I got to meet a lot of industry folk, a lot of different industry people, which I'll talk about in a separate video because, again, I could talk for a while on that. A lot of stuff at E3, but a lot of guys from IGN, a lot of guys from GameSpot, a lot of guys from Polygon, a lot of guys from Kotaku, all the guys from Kind of Funny, all those dudes are awesome. All these different people, a bunch of YouTubers and Twitchers. Uh, a lot of you guys, again, I, I'm going to list most of you guys that I've met over the course of another video. But hanging out with all those people, really, really good. 
hell of an experience being at E3 2015. It was an awesome, 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 awesome trip. I really cannot wait to go back for E3 2016. There's so many games like I got to talk about. Again, I can't fit it all into one video. I'm probably going to be doing a podcast very, very soon, probably tomorrow for the IGN All-Star Community Podcast, which I'll talk more in depth about my E3 experience over there. As well as some of the games I actually kind of want to bounce off my co-host Peter Lopez, which, by the way, I finally got to meet him for the first time. That was pretty insane. We didn't get to hang out as much as I wanted to. It was really, really brief. I got to talk for a bit, but I wanted to actually go out to lunch and or have dinner and just chill with him when I, during the course of E3. It's just the craziness that it was was like all over the place. But hands down is this. This is how I'll wrap it up, and this is how I'll wrap up this video. E3 2015 was a special year. I knew it was going to be a special year when a lot of my different colleagues were finally going to be able to go this time around, but it did not, it kind of exceeded and destroyed my expectations of how special of an E3 show it was going to be. So many good game announcements, so many good game demos, so many big news uh, items dropping all over the place, so many experiences and fun moments for myself that people I actually got to see. Again, all the people that I mentioned and all the people I didn't mention, which I'll get into later. But I really enjoyed this E3. I w I'm glad that you guys, you know, were able to get so much good footage and good content for it in all different kinds of outlets because this year really was a special year. You could feel it in the atmosphere and you could really feel it that this was a really special time to be a gamer. So I'm happy. Awesome, awesome year. Can't wait for 2016. But that's just my thoughts and my experience, guys. Leave some comments in the description. Oh, uh, the description box. Bleh. Leave some comments in the comments section below, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'm going to be doing more vlogs, you know, for today. I'm going to be kind of rolling out a couple just for you guys to get, kind of get that adrenaline shot for the actual channel. And I'm going to be doing vlogs every single day going forward for the actual channel. So besides that, also be on the lookout for gaming motivation videos weekly. It's going to be starting up again. Can't wait for you guys to actually check out all the cool ideas that I have. So I'm Jake James Lugo. This has been Gamers with Games. That was E3 2015. I'm exhausted as hell. I will talk to you guys again later. Peace out. Stay epic, everybody.